Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Monday, June 13th, 2022. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. The 12 tribes have now received their allotments from the land, but there are a couple of things that still need to happen as far as assigning uh, territory to different people. First of all, the Lord is going to have the people designate three more cities of refuge. Those cities of refuge were places where someone who had committed unintentional homicide, who had accidentally killed another person, could flee for refuge um, and protection. There were to be three of those east of the Jordan. We've already seen those established. Now we're going to see the establishment of three more west of the Jordan. Also, we have heard repeatedly that the Levites were not to be given a chunk of land uh, like the rest of the tribes were, uh, were given. Instead, the inheritance of the, the Levites was the priesthood and their work in the temple. But they were supposed to be given uh, cities in which to live. And so in our reading for, from Joshua chapters 20 and 21 today, we're going to see uh, the assignment of those Levitical cities among the different tribes of Israel. Then the Lord spoke to Joshua, tell the Israelites, select your cities of refuge as I instructed you through Moses, so that a person who kills someone unintentionally or accidentally may flee there. These will be your refuge from the avenger of blood. When someone flees to one of these cities, stands at the entrance of the city gate, and states his case before the elders of that city, they are to bring him into the city and give him a place to live among them. And if the avenger of blood pursues him, they must not hand the one who committed manslaughter over to him, for he killed his neighbor accidentally and did not hate him beforehand. He is to stay in that city until he stands trial before the assembly and until the death of the high priest serving at that time. Then the one who committed manslaughter may return home to his own city from which he fled. So they designated Kadesh in the hill country of Naphtali in Galilee, Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim, and Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, in the hill country of Judah. Across the Jordan, east of Jericho, they selected Bezer on the wilderness plateau from Reuben's tribe, Ramoth and Gilead from Gad's tribe, and Golan in Bashan from Manasseh's tribe. These are the cities appointed for all the Israelites and the aliens residing among them, so that anyone who kills a person unintentionally may flee there and do not die at the hand of the avenger of blood until he stands before the assembly. The Levi family heads approached the priest Eliezer, Joshua son of Nun, and the family heads of the Israelite tribes. At Shiloh in the land of Canaan, they told them, the Lord commanded through Moses that we be given cities to live in with their pasture lands for our livestock. So the Israelites, by the Lord's command, gave the Levites these cities with their pasture lands from their inheritance. The lot came out for the Kohathite clans. The Levites, who were the descendants of the priests of Aaron, received 13 cities by lot from the tribes of Judah, Simeon, and Benjamin. The remaining descendants of Kohath received 10 cities by lot from the clans of the tribes of Ephraim, Dan, and half the tribe of Manasseh. Gershon's descendants received 13 cities by lot from the clans of the tribes of Issachar, Asher, Naphtali, and half the tribe of Manasseh in Bashan. Merari's descendants received 12 cities for their clans from the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and Zebulun. The Israelites gave these cities with their pasture lands around them to the Levites by lot, as the Lord had commanded through Moses. The Israelites gave these cities by name from the tribes of the descendants of Judah and Simeon to the descendants of Aaron from the Kohathite clans of the Levites, because they received the first lot. They gave them Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron. Arba was the father of Anak, with its surrounding pasture lands in the hill country of Judah. But they gave the fields and settlements of the city to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, as his possession. They gave to the descendants of the priest Aaron, Hebron, the city of refuge for the one who commits manslaughter with its pasture lands, Libna with its pasture lands, Jatir with its pasture lands, 
Eshtemoa with its pasture lands, Holon with its pasture lands, Debir with its pasture lands, Ayan with its pasture lands, Juta with its pasture lands, Beth Shemesh with its pasture lands, nine cities from these two tribes. From the tribe of Benjamin, they gave Gibeon with its pasture lands, Geba with its pasture lands, Anathoth with its pasture lands, and Almon with its pasture lands, four cities. All 13 cities with their pasture lands were for the priests, the descendants of Aaron. The allotted cities to the remaining clans of Kohath's descendants, who were Levites, came from the tribe of Ephraim. The Israelites gave them Shechem, the city of refuge for the one who commits manslaughter, with its pasture lands in the hill country of Ephraim, Gezer with its pasture lands, Kibzaim with its pasture lands, and Beth Horon with its pasture lands, four cities. From the tribe of Dan they gave Eltiki with its pasture lands, Gibbethon with its pasture lands, Ijalon with its pasture lands, and Gathrimmon with its pasture lands, four cities. From half the tribe of Manasseh they gave Tanakh with its pasture lands, and Gathrimmon with its pasture lands, two cities. All ten cities with their pasture lands were for the clans of Kohath's other descendants. From half the tribe of Manasseh, they gave to the descendants of Gershon, who were one of the Levite clans, Golan, the city of refuge for the one who commits manslaughter, with its pasture lands in Bashan, and Bishtira, with its pasture lands, two cities. From the tribe of Issachar, they gave Kishion, with its pasture lands, Dabarath, with its pasture lands, Jarmuth, with its pasture lands, and Ain Ganim, with its pasture lands, four cities. From the tribe of Asher, they gave Mishal with its pasture lands, Abdon with its pasture lands, Helkath with its pasture lands, and Rehob with its pasture lands, four cities. From the tribe of Naphtali, they gave Kadesh and Galilee, the city of refuge for the one who commits manslaughter with its pasture lands, Hamoth Dor with its pasture lands, and Kartan with its pasture lands, three cities. All 13 cities with their pasture lands were for the Gershonites by their clans. From the tribe of Zebulun, they gave to the clans of the descendants of Merari, who were the remaining Levites, Jokneam with its pasture lands, Karta with its pasture lands, Dimna with its pasture lands, and Nahalal with its pasture lands, four cities. From the tribe of Reuben, they gave Bezer with its pasture lands, Jaza with its pasture lands, Kedemoth with its pasture lands, and Mephaath with its pasture lands, four cities. From the tribe of Gad they gave, Ramoth and Gilead, the city of refuge for the one who commits manslaughter with its pasture lands, Maenaim with its pasture lands, Heshbon with its pasture lands, and Jazer with its pasture lands, four cities in all. All 12 cities were allotted to the clans of Merari's descendants, the remaining Levite clans. Within the Israelite possession, there were 48 cities in all with their pasture lands for the Levites. Each of these cities had its own surrounding pasture lands. This was true for all the cities. So the Lord gave Israel all the land he had sworn to give their ancestors, and they took possession of it and settled there. The Lord gave them rest on every side according to all he had sworn to their ancestors. None of their enemies were able to stand against them for the Lord handed over all their enemies to them. None of the good promises the Lord had made to the house of Israel failed. Everything was fulfilled. We now turn our attention to the book of Acts. The book of Acts was written by the Dr. Luke, who also was the author of the Gospel of Luke. The book of Acts picks things up where Luke's Gospel ended with the ascension of Jesus, and then goes on to tell the history of the early Christian church through the work of the various apostles, including Peter and the other apostles, and then um, toward the end of the, in the, in the second part of the book of Acts, we focus especially on the work of the apostle Paul. Today we begin with book, or with chapter one of the book of Acts, which gives the account of Jesus's ascension, and then also talks about how the apostles uh, filled the vacancy that was left 
by the suicide of Judas Iscariot. I wrote the first narrative, Theophilus, about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up, after he had given instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After he had suffered, he also presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While he was with them, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the prom Father's promise, which, he said, you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit in a few days. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, are you restoring the kingdom to Israel at this time? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he had said this, he was taken up as they were watching, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, they were gazing into heaven, and suddenly two men in white clothes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into heaven? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come in the same way that you have seen him going into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they arrived, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, the zealot, and Judas, the son of James. They were all continually united in prayer, along with the women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers and sisters. The number of people who were together was about 120, and said, Brothers and sisters, it was necessary that the scripture be fulfilled that the Holy Spirit through the mouth of David foretold about Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was one of our number and shared in this ministry. Now this man acquired a field with his unrighteous wages. He fell head first, his body burst open, and his intestines spilled out. This became known to all the residents of Jerusalem, so that in their own language they called that. That field is called Hakaldama, which is field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his dwelling become desolate, let no one live in it, and let someone else take his position. Therefore, from among the men who have accompanied us during the whole time the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day he was taken up from us, from among these it is necessary that one become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they proposed to Joseph called Barsabbas, who is also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know, you know everyone's hearts. Show which of these two you have chosen to take the place in this apostolic ministry that Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots for them, and the lot fell to Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.